Hi friends, Steve here in Brentwood, California, at a home I think most of you will probably recognize. I always thought this was filmed in Florida. That's where the, the house was supposed to be, but it was actually right here in Brentwood, two blocks, well, it's actually, yeah, two blocks north of Sunset Boulevard and about two miles west of the 405 freeway. Just right off of Sunset Boulevard here. And of course, this is the home of the Golden Girls the classic TV show from the 1980s. And it seems really weird to be standing here in the front yard. And it's actually in escrow right now. I guess it's for sale. So you could probably go online and uh, look up the photos inside if you wanted to, since I'm sure it's on the, it's probably on Zillow and realtor.com and the various other real estate websites. But this is the front that was used in the classic TV show. The home is located at 245 North Salt Air Avenue. And this is the street here and I'm heading from Sunset Boulevard to the home, which is just ahead. Your destination is on the left. And just so you know, for those of you who make it to the end of this video, I'm going to share with you some photos sent to me by subscribers who took their own fun trips down memory lane. I'm also going to give shout outs to all of the subscribers who suggested that I do this video. And over the last few years, there have been quite a few of you. For those of you who are not familiar with the show, and I can't imagine that there are many of you, but just in case, it ran for seven seasons, airing from 1985 to 1992. This classic sitcom was about four single older women who share a home in Miami, Florida. It won two Emmy Awards for Best Sitcom, three Golden Globe Awards, and all four stars received Emmys for their roles. For the first six of its seven seasons, it was a top 10 rated show and only came to an end because B. Arthur decided to leave the series. And it's considered to be one of the best American sitcoms of all time by just about everybody. Betty White, who played Rose Nyland, is the last remaining Golden Girl still living. She's now 98 years old and is considered an entertainment pioneer. Her career has spanned more than 80 years and her first starring role in a sitcom was way back in 1953 in the series Life with Elizabeth. In the 1970s, she played the unforgettable Sue Ann Nivens in The Mary Tyler Moore Show. And then from 2010 to 2015, she played Elka Ostrovsky in the sitcom Hot in Cleveland. But Rose Nyland was probably her most lovable and memorable character. And what would the show be without the unforgettable theme song, Thank You for Being a Friend? It was composed in 1978 by singer and songwriter Andrew Gold and sung for the show by Cynthia Fine. Sadly, Gold died from heart failure in Encino, California at the young age of 59 on June 3, 2011. He was cremated and unfortunately has no final resting place to visit. Now, according to her Wikipedia page, B. Arthur, who played Dorothy Spornak on the show, died right here in Brentwood from lung cancer at the age of 86 on April 25th, 2009. And since she lived in the neighborhood, I wonder if she ever drove or walked by this house, taking her own trip down memory lane. Like Gold, she was also cremated and has no final resting place for fans to visit at this time. Rue McClanahan, who played Blanche Devereaux on the show, died from a brain hemorrhage at the age of 76 in New York on June 3, 2010. She too was cremated and also has no final resting place for fans to visit at this time. The only Golden Girl who does have a final resting place to visit at this time is actress Estelle Getty. She played Dorothy's sassy and very spunky 80-year-old mother, Sophia Petrillo. She's buried just about 10 miles east of here at Hollywood Forever Cemetery, and I'm going to head there next. But first, some of you are very observant, and you've noticed that I'm no longer driving Casper, my Ford Escape that I love so much that I had for 15 years and over 155,000 miles. Unfortunately, I was driving back and forth from my mom's from Palm Springs out to Quartzsite, Arizona during the middle of summer. One day, about halfway from Quartzsite to Palm Springs, the air conditioner went out it was 120 degrees outside and it was probably 130 or 40 inside the car with no air conditioning and got to thinking that you know kids and pets often die in hot cars and I thought gosh 
wouldn't that be a horrible way to go to uh, die in Casper on the middle of the desert <laughs> and I also realized there's not a lot of reception out there so if my car did die I mean that was just the air conditioner I thought well if the car dies that I'm stuck in the middle of summer 120 degree heat out in the middle of the desert and I don't necessarily want to be hitchhiking these days so I decided it was time to go ahead and retire Casper as much as I loved Casper and was hoping that we would make uh, many more trips together over the years, I just realized that uh, since I really am traveling so much and I'm planning to take lots of road trips in the future, as many as I can take, I decided I really needed a reliable car. And at 155,000 miles, Casper had always been very reliable, but you know, who knows what would happen down the road. And I don't want to be stuck on the East Coast or the Midwest or up in Canada and have to have it towed home or who knows what. So I traded Casper in for Casper Jr. here. This is a, uh, a Honda Fit. It's really a weird feeling because inside it feels just as spacious, just as large, and pretty much the same as my Ford Escape. Casper was much taller, but other than that, I think they're around the same size. Maybe a little bit, uh, a few inches shorter, and maybe not as wide by a few inches, but really the big difference is the height. The gas mileage is so much better on this as well. Being an economy car and a newer car, it has all kinds of features that uh, Casper didn't have. And so it's really a nice car, and I feel like I'm still really driving Casper around. It's, they're very, very similar just a little bit tinier. So it's sort of like a miniaturized version of uh, the Ford Escape. But the gas mileage is a lot better. So on these long trips that I plan to take in the future, I'll be saving a lot of money, which is, as you know, is something I'm always trying to do, especially on these trips, which can be very expensive. Do any of you drive a Honda Fit? If so, please let me know in the comments section. Estelle Getty's gravesite here at Hollywood Forever Cemetery is one of the easiest to find. You just enter through the front gates, go straight back, and in the section on the right-hand side, just past the second cross street, you'll see her headstone popping up behind the hedge. The front gate entrance is right there straight ahead. Getty died here in Los Angeles at the age of 84 from dementia-related causes on July 22, 2008. I first saw Getty on Broadway in 1982 in Harvey Firestein's play Tort Song Trilogy. We had front row seats and she just about stole the show. She was so unforgettable. And three years later in 1985, I immediately recognized her in the Golden Girls playing Sophia. And once again, at least in my opinion, she stole every scene she was in. Like Granny in the Beverly Hillbillies, she played one of the most iconic characters in TV history. Before moving on and showing you more grave sites, I want to give a shout out to all of you who suggested that I do this vlog. Thomas Benninger, Tony Wheelock, Cheryl Johnson, Jeremy Finbo, Lana Banana, Mariah Williams, Alyssa McAtee, Karen, Charlene Iddings, Dark Dio Studio, Jonathan Woodgate, The Gay Nomad, Geocat, Lauren Skip, Dan Given, Little Opichi, Bob Shrub, Elaine Stouffer, Michelle Green, Nicole C., Donna Hill, Lisa the Diva, Jennifer Lawson, Brian Lowry, Corey Hornstra, Kevin Shagno, Mr. LPN2, Lana Lee's Beauty Slam, Doolittle, John Duffy, King Martin, Natalie N.H., Kathy Tickle, Kim Deems, Megan Murphy, Michelle S., and Jason Gibson. I hope I didn't forget anyone, and I hope I didn't butcher your names too badly. A few weeks ago, I shared with you my Andy Griffith TV show vlog, and I mentioned that I'd not yet been to Aunt B's gravesite back in North Carolina. I'm happy to say that two subscribers to this channel saw the video and sent me photos from their visits to Frances Bavier's gravesite. I'm not sure if she pronounced her last name Bouvier or Bavier, but she's laid to rest at Oakwood Cemetery in Silver City, North Carolina. And this first photo was sent to me by Tammy Jones and WV Wildlife Cam, who has his own YouTube channel, sent me these photos. I'm not really surprised to see that someone left pickles at her gravesite, but I'm not really sure what the little house figurine is supposed to represent. If you happen to know, please share with us in the comments section. David Bond said that he's been visiting cemeteries since he was a kid, 
and seriously searching for notable grave sites in his area since he discovered findagrave.com in 2003. Burl Ives is buried in Mound Cemetery in Hunt City, Illinois, and David says this photo was taken on a family vacation in 2006. Paul Lind is buried in Amity Cemetery in Knox County, Ohio, which is about 40 miles from David's home. And this photo was taken by David's brother-in-law also back in 2006. So thank you, Tammy, David, and David for sharing your own trips down memory lane with us. A few months ago, I was walking around downtown Palm Springs, California, and just happened to spot the Golden Girls staring back at me from the display window of the Trevor Wayne Art Gallery. I think it's pretty cool that 35 years after the show first aired, the Golden Girls are just as popular as they ever were. And this week, I want to give a shout out and a very big thank you to my latest Patreon supporters, Jessica Gold, James Jackson, Henry Oman, James Takax, and Eric Watson. Thanks so much for your very generous support. It really does mean a lot. So until our next trip down memory lane together, happy travels, everyone.